They are unique to Mumbai. No other city in the world has them, because no other city has the special characteristics of this booming, bustling Big Apple of India. For one thing, skyrocketing land prices make it virtually impossible for the average employee to live near their place of work anywhere in Mumbai. Moreover, Mumbai is a great magnet. It draws people from all over India, each with their own dietary foibles and taboos. Besides, as the cost of living in Mumbai soared, it became increasingly difficult to get one's meals from downtown eateries. And since we Indians have not yet taken to sandwiches, salads and cold cuts, or even cold food in general, the great army of Mumbai's workers are left with just two options. Starve all through the working day, or dream of having someone deliver your hot, home-cooked meal to your office. An impossible dream? But then, Mumbai is a city where many impossible dreams have become reality. As this one did, enter the Dabawalas. As former Mumbai cars, we had seen these food couriers hustle on board our commuter trains, rush off at terminuses, and trot through crowded roads carrying coffin-sized crates laden with lunches. They were as much a part of the Mumbai scene as the black cabs with yellow tops. In the year 1890, an old Parsi lady in the suburb of Dadar spoke to Mahadu Iwaji Bacha. She wanted him to help her to get a tiffin carrier across to her husband who worked in the commercial heart of Bombay, as the city was called then. That was the start of the Dabawalas. From those humble beginnings, this self-made Indian organization has grown into a huge network whose incredible efficiency has won the admiration of international business schools and even of Prince, now King, Charles of England. On a humid day in March, to the crash of the carrier-laden crates called trays being deposited on the pavement, the clang of tiffin carriers being sorted out office-wise, and the announcements from the railway station, we spoke to the president and the members of the Mumbai Tiffin Box Suppliers Association. How many Dabawalas are there today? 3,500 plying the Western Railway, 1,500 on the Central Railway. This station, Churchgate, is on the Western Railway. We have two lock customers and they're growing. Really? In spite of fast food eateries? Cha, you can't live on fast food. What time do you pick up the food? The earliest is at eight o'clock in the morning. If it is not ready, we leave but we give that customer one more chance. The next time it is delayed, we remove them from our list. We deliver to the office by 1 p.m. sharp or earlier. We collect by 2 p.m. If late, we leave. Again, only one more chance. We deliver empty tiffin boxes to customers by 5.30 in the evening, latest. We charge about ours, 500 per customer every month. Another member chimed in. I collect tiffin carriers from 20 flats in Andheri. That's so far away. How many fit into a tray? 40 to 45. A laden tray weighs 85 to 100 kilos. And there are five changing points where we offload the trays from the train, change them into other trays, and then change them again. It has all to be done very fast, very accurately. How do you know which tiffin carrier goes into which tray? We have alpha numerical markings on every tiffin carrier indicating the location of the flat, the changing points, the delivery points, the dabawalas involved. Who worked out this system for you? We did. Can your MBAs do it? Never. In fact, they have often asked us to explain it to them. Even Prince Charles did. We sent him a present for his wedding, and we have a letter from him to prove it. Our system is flawless. How old is the oldest Dabawala? That's Bikaji. He's 74 years old and he's been working for 50 years. The youngest is 21. We watched, fascinated, as the trays arrived and were sorted out into hand-drawn carts, cycles, and even festooned like multiple garlands around the necks and shoulders of delivery Dabawalas. We learned that all Dabawalas are put through rigorous training because they have to deal courteously with customers, and so, cannot be uncouth or drunk. Moreover, if they forget to wear their distinguishing white caps, they are initially fined for the first offense and then removed from the association if it should happen again. They run a very tightly controlled, disciplined organization. 
We left the Dabawalas to get on with their schedules and walked across to the tea center for our own lunch. In the lobby, next to the lift, we noticed a Daba under a trestle table. The guard told us that it belonged to someone in the Textiles Export Promotion Council on an upper floor. We went up and met Il Paolo, director and secretary of the council. He lived in the suburbs on Mira Road, and he had been dealing with the Daba Wallace for ten years. He told us that they pick up his tiffin carrier at eight o'clock every morning. In all these ten years, he said, they have never missed. It's a wonderful service, very reliable. Such a comment from a senior executive who has to maintain international standards is indeed a great endorsement. This is particularly commendable when it is applied to a network as wide-ranging and as entirely grassroots generated as Mumbai's unique Dabawalas. And if you want another endorsement, ask Prince King Charles.